This is my country. This is Honduras. It is located south of the United States, bordered by El Salvador, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. It is a very difficult life for the people here. They work every single day of the week to sustain a family of six, seven members. These people have a great heart and they're very humble and kind, the great people. I am Luis Roberto Orea Mazzoni. I live here in Honduras. I live in the capital city, Tegucigalpa. And I come from Discovery School to this brigade to help the doctors translate. Here we are at Fabiano Rosado's Cruz House, better known as the Rope Man. There are no windows, no air conditioning, no electricity, no water. This is the main living room, which has two hammocks, where all six children sleep. There's a chicken in the corner right there, but they're just that's just part of their life. Chicken, 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 chicken. You have chickens in your room? I don't have chickens in my room. This is what the typical kitchen looks like, and they still use ancient cooking methods. They cook with a wood stove. But in many houses here in San Marcos, the stove is actually in the middle of the house, and that's a big problem because that causes many respiratory system problems and also eye irritation. The homes in rural areas don't have indoor plumbing, running water, and the bathroom is outdoors. You can probably hear the animals and relax, but imagine if it's raining, you get all wet. That's not funny at all. If you need to take a bath, you need to go to the nearest pond or river, and you need to take it with a bucket. In Honduras, education is a privilege. Not everybody gets the chance to get it. Those who do are very grateful. This is the daily trail that these children and teachers have to walk. They walk this every single day. It's a treacherous and exhausting trail, but you have to do it. This particular school has 30 students per grade. It's mixed, both girls and boys. It's only one teacher for an entire class, and it goes up to the seventh grade. They have the math section, the social science section, and they have books, they have desks. But they don't have air conditioning, they don't have computers. It's not completely like in the United States, but that's pretty much what they have. Cape Care sends nine teams a year to my country. They provide medical and dental care to the people in three poor rural areas, El Algodonal, Los Encinitos, and San Marco del Ángel. The three sites are all located in the south mountainous area of Honduras. The roads are not paved and they're very dangerous to travel. There is no access during the rainy season. So here we are at the San Marcos Medical Brigade where we have both doctors and dentists. The patients we have, they're telling us they walked two hours, three hours, four hours, and they've been waiting there. Some of them have been waiting for over three hours because of the amount of patients that they have. But these doctors do their best to help all these people that need the help. We did a surgery to a woman that she had like a bump in her head, like a ball. The ER doctor aspirated it. She was very calm. She followed all the instructions and it was an amazing operation, successful. She was lucky that a uh, year doctor was here and she really thanked the doctor and, and I thank the doctor also for coming. There was a child who apparently was running. He was running through a field and he got a stock in the lower leg. Dr. Warren decided to do surgery. When you saw it, it's, it's what's like this big and, and, he, and the mother was shocked that he had that for over four, four months. The amazing thing was when they took it out, he didn't cry at all, he was just smiling. Here we are at the pharmacy, or the word for Spanish, farmacia. We have the patients come in uh, after the prescription they get from the doctor. And here we have Bob that gives them the dosage and the proper directions. 
to what they need. This is where the translator is really important since they need to pay attention and to understand how they're supposed to use the medicine. This is where the action takes place. Here we are with several dentists working on extractions. This is Dr. Theodis. He takes the most complex cases. He's a maxillofacial surgeon. In some cases it can be one tooth or a mouthful. This is a really uh, extreme case of rampant, rampant cavities. And levantese la cabeza, levantese. Gracias. Most patients have multiple teeth that are uh, decayed. Left untreated will probably go on to uh, massive infections. You're looking at about at least 10, maybe 12 teeth that he would benefit getting removed. Local villagers don't take proper care of their teeth. They drink too much sodas, they eat a lot of sweets, lollipops, and they eat sugar canes a lot. If they are lucky enough, they get to go to the restoration over there where they actually put a filling to save the teeth. Over here, we're at the restoration site where dentists are trying to save uh, teeth that are not completely decay or rotten. First, what they do is they clean all the decay area and then they put the filling in. After the dentists are done with their dental tools, they go here for sterilization and cleaning. They go through several stages of sterilization. Here we don't have any electricity, so we just have two choices to do this. The first one through chemicals, or the second one through heat, pressure cook. They're loading it up with the morning's instruments, and we have a little water in the bottom to make the steam. And we have a propane stove that we'll try to light. In about a half, half hour, we'll open this thing up again. So I'll lift off the uh, safety cap and we'll open the pot in a second when this little thing goes down. And there we have some well sterilized instruments. All of these supplies and donations, such as toothbrushes, fluoride, and all the money that you donate is used to treat the people here. You're probably wondering what happens with your donations. Well, here they are. We have the toothbrushes that are being separated between adults and children. We take them to our schools and give them to children. And it's very important because we teach them how to brush their teeth properly. And also, we give some of them to our patients that are being treated in the dental area. Cape Girls are doing an amazing job. They have amazing doctors with great heart. They can see the conditions that some people live. They really know what these people go through. This is really painful and really bad. It, it really shocks you to see how Cape Girls can, can help all these people and how an impact they are for this community, this, this society. So I want to say that it's really gratifying coming with Cape Girls and I hope I can come back sometime. I am very thankful and appreciative that some people find a room in their heart to come here all the way to Honduras, stay in places where there's no electricity, no water, mosquito bites, animals, but they, they, they come here, they help these people. Otherwise, the people would never get the proper medical or dental attention. So I thank you for helping my people and helping my country, Honduras. Look, that's our welcoming committee. We want them to see how happy our last customer is, so they won't be afraid. They went to the school yesterday, and this child, uh, Jose Melvin Perez Gomez, made this thank you card. Hola, es hi, in English, hi. Es guapo. They kind of take over your hearts. They like steal your heart, and you, they just keep it. When you leave, yeah, you'll never get it back. Yeah. <laughs>